One can argue that one of the biggest traits of the human species is our constant pursuit of knowledge. To peer into the unknown for the sake of nothing but curiosity has driven us to unmatched heights that our ancestors could have only dreamed of. In our never-ending thirst for knowledge, exploration of our surroundings has played a major role. The first age of human exploration happened in the 15th century when the Europeans decided to load up on boats and head into the sea in search of a new world. And now, several centuries later, another Another age of exploration may be on the horizon, but this time to map our cosmos. While our current technology has limited our chances, NASA has revealed a brand new helical engine that may launch us into the age of space exploration. Let's take a closer look. One question that gets asked a lot is if space exploration is important enough to justify billions of dollars in research and development. At the time of the moon landing in 1969, many people envisioned that by the beginning of the 21st century, space travel would become routine and we would be visiting other planets in our solar system and perhaps even daring to venture into interstellar space. That future didn't arrive as planned. Humans haven't made it any deeper into space than when we landed on the moon in the late 1960s and early 1970s, though we have operated a manned orbital outpost, the International Space Station, which has been continuously occupied for more than two decades. NASA currently is planning to resume human missions to the moon in the mid to late 2020s as a prelude to astronauts eventually traveling to Mars. We've also seen the rise of private space entrepreneurs such as Elon Musk, who has described his dream of building a rocket capable of reaching Mars and supporting a permanent human settlement there. And other countries are looking to reach Mars as well. China, for example, aims to send its astronauts to the Red Planet by 2033. But those who've long dreamed of humans becoming a truly spacefaring race argue that exploring space provides down-to-earth benefits in areas such as health, mining, and security. And more inspirational benefits too. One such benefit is having a backup settlement for our species to survive in case of a catastrophic event on Earth. If we don't want to go the way of the dinosaurs someday, we need to protect ourselves against the threat of being hit by a big asteroid. According to NASA, typically about once every 10,000 years, a rocky or iron asteroid the size of a football field could smash into our planet's surface and possibly cause tidal waves big enough to inundate coastal areas. But it's the real monsters, asteroids about 328 feet across or bigger, that we have to fear. Such a collision would unleash a firestorm of heated debris and fill the atmosphere with sun-blocking dust, which would wipe out forests and farm fields and starve the human and animal life life that it didn't immediately kill. That's why it's vital to develop a way to neutralize such a threat to Earth. NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test, set for launch in late September 2022, will be the first mission to demonstrate a technology called Asteroid Deflection by Kinetic Impactor. A robotic spacecraft will be crashed into the binary asteroid system Didymos to show that it's possible to slightly alter the path of an asteroid. That would enable NASA to redirect potential threats to miss Earth. Another benefit is potentially finding an answer to the age-old question of if we are alone in the universe. According to a survey, nearly two-thirds of Americans believe that intelligent life exists on other planets. In general, the public does not view UFOs as a major threat to the country. When asked to think about U.S. national security, 51% of Americans say that UFOs are not a threat at all, and 36% believe they are a minor threat. But so far, sweeps of the sky with Earth-based telescopes for signals that might be beacons from distant civilizations have proven fruitless, possibly because the Earth's atmosphere interferes with such messages reaching us. That's why searchers for extraterrestrial civilizations are eager for the deployment of more orbital observatories, such as the James Webb Space Telescope. The satellite, which was launched on Christmas Day 2021, can search for the chemical signs of life in the atmospheres of distant planets outside our solar system. That's a start, but an even more aggressive space-based effort to look for clues of extraterrestrials might finally help us to answer the question of whether we have company out there. Our primitive ancestors started from East Africa and spread all over the planet. Since then, we've never stopped moving. We are running out of fresh territory on Earth, so the only way to meet this ancient urge is to find somewhere new to go. Whether it's making brief jaunts to the moon as a tourist, or signing up for an interstellar voyage that will take multiple generations. In a speech to the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership, former NASA Administrator Michael Griffin differentiated between acceptable reasons and real reasons for space exploration. Acceptable reasons would be issues like economic benefit and national security. But real reasons include concepts like curiosity, competitiveness, and monument building. 
Our burgeoning population, rampant greed, and thoughtlessness about environmental consequences have already done pretty severe damage to our planet. According to a 2012 survey of research, most scientists estimate that Earth has a carrying capacity of between 8 and 16 billion, and we already have a population of nearly 8 billion. That's led some futurists to argue that we should be preparing to colonize another planet, and soon. Your life, or those of your descendants, might depend on it. To that end, if we want to get any far in the universe, we will need to drastically improve our propulsion technology. As it stands, our technological limitations prohibit us from traveling too far from Earth, let alone the solar system. Over the years, scientists have worked on many theories and prototypes that could replace the traditional propulsion methods and help us travel at the speed of light. In 1676, by studying the motion of Jupiter's moon Io, Danish astronomer Ole Romer calculated that light travels at a finite speed. Two years later, building on data gathered by Romer, Dutch mathematician and scientist Christian Huygens became the first person to attempt to determine the actual speed of light. Huygens came up with a figure of 131,000 miles per second, a number that isn't accurate by today's standards. We now know that the speed of light in the vacuum of empty space is about 186,282 miles per second, but his assessment showcased that light travels at an incredible speed. According to Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity, light travels so fast that, in a vacuum, nothing in the universe is capable of moving faster. Light exhibits both particle-like and wave-like characteristics and can therefore be regarded as both a particle and a wave. This is known as wave-particle duality. If we look at light as a wave, then there are multiple reasons why certain waves can travel faster than white light in a medium. One such reason is that light travels through a medium, for instance glass or water droplets. The different frequencies or colors of light travel at different speeds. The most obvious visual example of this occurs in rainbows, which typically have the long, faster red wavelengths at the top and the short, slower violet wavelengths at the bottom. When light travels through a vacuum, however, the same is not true. All light is a type of electromagnetic wave, and they all have the same speed in a vacuum. This means both radio waves and gamma rays have the same speed. So the only thing capable of traveling faster than the speed of light is, somewhat paradoxically, light itself, though only when not in the vacuum of space. Of note, regardless of the medium, the light will never exceed its maximum speed of 186,282 miles per second. Scientists believe that there is something else to consider when discussing things moving faster than the speed of light. There are parts of the universe that are expanding away from us faster than the speed of light because space-time is expanding. For example, the Hubble Space Telescope recently spotted 12.9 billion-year-old light from a distant star known as Arendel. But because the universe is expanding at every point, Arendel is moving away from Earth and has been since its formation, so the galaxy is now 28 billion light-years away from Earth. In this case, space-time is expanding, but the material in space-time is still traveling within the bounds of light speed. For every action, there is a reaction. That is the principle on which all space rockets operate, blasting propellant in one direction to travel in the other. But one NASA engineer believes he could take us to the stars without any propellant at all. Designed by David Burns at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, the helical engine exploits mass-altering effects known to occur at near-light speed. It has been met with skepticism from some quarters, but Burns believes his concept is worth pursuing. To get to grips with the principle of Burns' engine, picture a box on a frictionless surface. Inside that box is a rod, along which a ring can slide. If a spring inside the box gives the ring a push, the ring will slide along the rod one way, while the box will recoil in the other. When the ring reaches the end of the box, it will bounce backward, and the box's recoil direction will switch too. This is action-reaction, also known as Newton's third law of motion, and in normal circumstances, it restricts the box from wiggling back and forth. But, Burns asks, what if the ring's mass is much greater when it slides in one direction than the other? Then it would give the box a greater kick at one end than the other. Action would exceed reaction, and the box would accelerate forwards. This mass change isn't prohibited by physics. 
Einstein's theory of special relativity says that objects gain mass as they are driven towards the speed of light, an effect that must be accounted for in particle accelerators. A simplistic implementation of Burns' concept would be to replace the ring with a circular particle accelerator in which ions are swiftly accelerated to relativistic speed during one stroke and decelerated during the other. But Burns thinks it would make more sense to ditch the box and rod and employ the particle accelerator for the lateral as well as the circular movement, in which case the accelerator would need to be shaped like a helix. It would also need to be big, some 200 meters long and 12 meters in diameter, and powerful, requiring 165 megawatts of power to generate just one newton of thrust, which is about the same force you use to type on a keyboard. For that reason, the engine would only be able to reach meaningful speeds in the frictionless environment of space. Burns states that the engine itself would be able to get to 99% the speed of light if you had enough time and power. Propellant-less proposals aren't new. In the late 1970s, Robert Cook, a U.S. inventor, patented an engine that supposedly converted centrifugal force into linear motion. Then, in the early 2000s, British inventor Roger Scheuer proposed the M-Drive, which he claimed could convert trapped microwaves into thrust. Neither concept has been successfully demonstrated, and both are widely assumed to be impossible due to violation of the conservation of momentum, a core physical law. Scientists who previously performed tests on the M-Drive believe the helical engine will probably suffer the same problem. Burns has worked on his design in private, without any sponsorship from NASA, and he admits his concept is massively inefficient. However, he says there is potential to harvest much of the energy that the accelerator loses in heat and radiation. He also suggests ways that momentum could be conserved, such as in the spin of the accelerated ions. Even though failures of the M-Drive and cold fusion are fresh in memory, Burns states that he is prepared to be embarrassed if his design fails, but the possibility of inventing something that could change history is far more exciting. If you enjoyed this video, you may also like this other one, which talks about NASA's new plan to colonize Venus. Do you think we will become an interstellar species? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.